Hello and welcome to another edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm your host for today, Loremaker Will Weisbaum, your third favorite Loremaker. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kellogg system, which is quite exciting, and it's the best system to start your day off with. So let's go ahead and do a search. Oh, let's do a route actually. Let's go from Earth all the way to Kellogg. Get that going. And today I'm going to be taking my Herald, so we're going to go small. Let's calculate the route. Uh, 10 jumps or 5 jumps? 5 jumps, please. Safety be damned. I'm going to view that route. So we're exiting out of Seoul. I'm going to hop on through Croshaw, zip on through Null, cross through Vega. Oh, those poor people. End up in Virgil, which is a military classified. I'm starting to rethink taking the shortest route. And then from there, we're going to jump on through the Kellogg jump point. Wow. And here we are. Welcome to the Kellogg system. Starting off, it is a UE developing system, and it's protected by the Fair Chance Act. For those of you who don't know, the Fair Chance Act is an initiative started to protect planets that have uh, sapien or sentient uh, species developing on them, and it's to make sure that they're allowed to grow and not interfered with. This came about after a world was terraformed, after it was discovered that it had a developing culture on it, and they were completely wiped out. So now the UE goes out of their way to protect those developing systems, and the Fair Chance Act is the way they do it. So the whole system is considered protective. Um, the star at the center is a G-type main sequence yellow dwarf star. Ooh. And there are six planets in Kellogg, and the system is around 33 AU. And we got a green band, fairly small compared to how big the system is, at uh, 0.9 AU, and it goes all the way out to 1.3 AU. So there you go. And the main focus of the system, what really gets people excited about Kellogg, are probably its two inhabited worlds, which are Zeiss over here, which is the main focus of the Fair Chance Act. That is where our developing species is, and we'll talk more about that. And then all the way out here, we have Quarter Deck, which is the infamous prison planet. And so between those two, that's the, the main heart of the system. But before we uh, dive into that, we're going to take a look through the rest of the system. So let's start over here at Kellogg 1. This little red guy, you can see in the map, it's all red and burning hot because it's so close to the sun that its entire surface is molten lava. And uh, it is a uh, terrestrial lava planet. And what ends up happening is it has these huge uh, eruptions, and they're so violent that stuff actually makes it like high up into the atmosphere. And depending on the rotation of the planet, sometimes they can form into cool off rapidly and form these rock debris, or you could have basically lava rainstorms coming down on you. So it is a very dangerous planet to visit. The whole system overall was discovered in 2811 by a nav jumper named Paddock Cohen, and he had dedicated his life to the discovery of new systems. This was the only one he managed to do, and it was towards the end of his career, and his dream was always to settle down in a system that he discovered. And unfortunately, that wasn't meant to be the case here because of it becoming part of the Fair Chance Act. He was not allowed to live in the system even though he petitioned to be able to do so. Um, what finally sealed the deal, though, was that he was able to name the system Kellogg after his former mentor and partner who had passed away shortly before the discovery. So it's named in honor of them, which is a quite a touching tribute, I think. So while he didn't get to live there, at least he got to do that. Um, now we looked at Kellogg 1, Kellogg 3, is over here. Now this is a smog planet. It is uninhabitable in its current state and it won't be terraformed because of the Fair Chance Act. Um, out of all the worlds, it's the most neglected because, you know, at least uh, 
between Z Zeiss and Quarterdeck, you have those. And then Kellogg 5 has its own thing going and Kellogg 4, but Kellogg 3, nothing really going on. So this is the one favorite out of all of them uh, by smugglers and criminals who are bold enough to operate in the heavily protected system. So usually when people try to hide out in Kellogg, they head over to Kellogg 3. From there, we can take a look at Kellogg 4. Over there now. Kellogg 4 is a super earth. Uh, it is covered in copious resources, and a lot of people want to mine those resources, but there's still ongoing debate about how best to handle it. There's even been petitions to say that the prisoners of Quarterdeck should be allowed to open up mining operations there to generate profit for the UEE, um, and private companies want a chance. But so far, uh, no permits have been handed out and has remained untouched, other than by some rogue individuals who sneak onto the planet and try to mine and stealth. Uh, Kellogg 5 is a gas dwarf planet, which is fairly unusual. It is not a gas giant because it has a rocky core. Um, and it is only one of few gas dwarfs that can be found in the UE. Um, at first, it was very much like Kellogg 4 in that no industry was allowed. But because of the increased cost in shipping quantum fuel out to support quarter deck and Zeiss, it was eventually allowed to open uh, a few refineries around the planet. So those are operating now to provide uh, fuel to the ships operating for the UE in the system. So now that we got those out of the way, let's go head into a, the heart of the system and check out Zeiss over here. Now, Zeiss is a terrestrial rocky planet. It is covered in mostly uh, oceans, warm oceans and jungles. And I say covered in mostly, and the, it's got various terrains, but that is the predominant features when you look at it from space. Um, the planet itself, Zeiss, is named after the first creature that was discovered by scientists doing the initial surveys. Uh, it was a 14-eyed insect, and Zai is the 14th letter of the Greek alphabet, so pluralization of that ended up carrying on the name of the planet overall. It's now known as Zeiss. Uh, the reason the world received Fair Chance Act designation was because of a primitive hominid-like hominid -like species called Orms, who live in the planet's northern region. Uh, they uh, are one of the fastest developing species that are under the fair chance at world. And in the past century, their society uh, complexity and text level has just really increased as scientists have been observing them. It's quite exciting for the researchers working here. Um, now, while few people have seen orms outside of vids, there's another creature from Zeiss that has been seen the UEE over, and those are the flow pets. Um, in the early 30th century, some smugglers managed to collect a few of these friendly creatures and get them off world. Uh, their hopes were because they were very easy to breed, they had short lifespans, and they were very protein dense, um, that they would make good source of food. But unfortunately, they discovered quickly that uh, toxic amino acid that was inside the pet couldn't be bred out of them, so they were inedible. But in the domestication process, they discovered that they make excellent pets that were very friendly uh, and easy to take care of. So they became extremely popular around the UEE flow standing for friendly little organism. Um, and as flow pets got really popular amongst the wealthy, um, demand skyrocketed and the UEE tried to crack down on them because it was a, you know, a bad thing to kind of turn a blind eye to a creature that was smuggled off a of fair chance world. So people were nervous that when they started issuing fines and arresting people associated with flow pet uh, trading, um, a lot of people just released their flow pet out onto the streets and 
fortunately, the flow pets are really easily able to adapt to a wide variety uh, of locations, and they were well suited to cities. So now you have large stray populations on flow pets on many, many planets across the UE. Uh, since they have become so common and kind of there are more flow pets now living outside of Zeiss than there are on the world itself, the UE has turned back their policy and now it is legal to own flow pets once again. Floating nearby Zeiss is the orbital platform Pegasus, which is used as the ground base for research and science operations as well as housing the military personnel who protect the planet from outside influence. Um, and the military personnel here rotate commonly between serving here and going over and serving the quarter deck. This being considered the much nicer place to work. So uh, it's kind of standard duty where you do a few months here, a few months over at quarter deck. Uh, there is an overlook that provides a great view of the planet below and that's kind of the main socializing hub on the station. Uh, if you're traveling here, you want to make sure that you have the proper author authorization through contracting uh, to deliver supplies or civilian po personnel to the station. Otherwise, you're going to get harassed. And actually leaving the station, there is a lot of security, and they want to make sure that you're not leaving with any unauthorized samples or the like because um, there's a lot of samples stored aboard the station and there's been smuggling in the past. So now when you're leaving, you do a very thorough search of your vessel before you head out. From there, we can head on over to quarter deck. Uh, quarter deck is a terrestrial ice planet. Um, the reason why quarter deck was chosen to become a prison planet was once the whole system was going to be designated for scientific research, but that was before the two jump points to Vandal Space were discovered in the system. There's one to Virgil over here, and there's one to Vector over here, and that made the system a more dangerous one as Vandal raiding parties began to show up. Uh, at first, they thought they were going to have to increase their military operations here, but a senator, uh, Daniela Ar. Agrin, Daniela Agrin, suggested that uh, rather than just doing military operations, they can convert uh, Kellogg 6 into a prison planet. And such a facility would not only solve the security concerns, but it would be able to generate its own money thanks to building an antimatter refinery there. Um, and so that was after much debate, it was approved. Um, and it was seen as a win-win because not many planets want to host antimatter facilities due to the risk involved. And, but it was considered safe because quarter deck was so far away from the rest of the system. And it was a safe enough distance away from Zeiss. So the plans went ahead. Um, the presence of the quarter deck in the system has made Kellogg one of the busier fair chance systems in that there's a steady stream of people coming through for non-research reasons. Um, one of the things that makes it so suited to be a prison planet is the fact that Kellogg 6 is so cold. This frozen world was seen as a way to prevent escape because people, if they got outside of the facilities, would quickly very much be in trouble from the environmental conditions. At least that was the idea. There have been several successful escapes over the years. One famous case recently was a prisoner escaped and then hid out uh, on Kellogg 3 and was trying to avoid detection. But unfortunately, they got stuck in the world and no one knew they were there. And they managed to survive for a few months off their supplies on their ship before they had to send up an emergency beacon and almost perished, but were recaptured by authorities. Um, quarter deck, as I mentioned, has a full antimatter processing facility, and prisoners are, are work there in order to get reduced sentences. Very recently, uh, Senator Heron from Ellis tried to introduce a bill that would make working in the refinery mandatory 
to help improve costs of the facility. Um, and then at the same time, there's even senators who are proposing closing the system, like Gata Veras from Coral, uh, because they considered it a security risk um, for the UE to rely on antimatter from a world so close to Vandal space. Nearby to quarter deck at its Lagrange point is the Justice Star, and the Justice Star is the main uh, entry point into quarter deck. All ships arriving at quarter deck are supposed to go through the Justice Star, um, and they have a security uh, system set up in place where they can accept in criminals, process them, and send them down to quarter deck. A lot of bounty hunters bring prisoners directly there to be processed. Um, so there's a lot of traffic that way. Um, oddly enough, with the security of the Justice Star and Quarter Deck and uh, Pegasus Station, there is a lot of sectors that have very high security, but they're all kind of around these focal points, whereas the rest of the system is kind of lower security. And there's been a few cases recently where because the system has the illusion of high security that like researchers and the like often go out uh, without escorts. And so there was an outlaw group that got very bold and planted themselves in the system and been preying upon researchers there and stealing their very expensive equipment. So there's been kind of a, a rethinking and a pushback there to get more security for the ships flying through kind of the quieter sections of Kellogg. Um, and that's about it for the system. So on one end you have cutting edge research and science being done, and on the other end you have prisoners working away in dangerous antimatter refineries. So it's got this neat dichotomy to it that's going to be really fun to explore further once we get it in game. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Lore Makers, and thank you to all the backers out there for helping make this game possible, and thank you to all the subscribers for supporting content like this. And I will see you around the Lore Makers. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.